lemon and made up ribbon. Upload giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. This time we'll be checking out Das Boot, developed by Artec Digital Entertainment and published by Mindscape in 1990. Das Boot was originally released only on an NTSC compatible screen so for this we're going to play in PAL mode unfortunately and we're going to stretch that screen to full screen so if you're playing this in NTSC you can have a full screen experience and you can see even on the title page it gives us an image and it also gives us lots of options as well and even though this is one of the most arcade submarine games on the entire Amiga this definitely does have some elements which incorporate simulation and I wouldn't call it a massive simulation because it has a high score table. You can see all of the different sub games that in the game have their own high score table. You can see there are quite some of them and every time you play one of those sub games or practice that you might get a high score. So this is definitely in the arcade realm of submarine games. We can see a demonstration or we can play and try the missions or even train up before we even start. So let's try the introductory training and for this let's try medium and Baltic training is definitely something that I'd recommend before we even get into the game itself. Now we move into the Baltic Ocean and it's now time to shoot down some planes. This is practicing the anti-aircraft section of the game and there are plenty of sub games in this one so it's a bit like a summer games of World War II submarine combat and so if you can get your head around that this is the shooting down planes event and you can see we only have a few shots remaining and you can also see a high score on the screen as well. By the time we complete an event, we'll then get our chance to enter our name on the high score table. And you can see various stats on the screen as well. So definitely if you wanted a shooting down plane simulator, this is quite fun. So let's move on to another section. So that's the anti-aircraft. Let's try now the deck gun. Just like Beachhead, we'll get a single gun to lob towards the enemies and that thing can fire a single projectile at once and I don't think we're shooting any ships down at the moment but with the deck gun we can shoot down and rotate in 360 degrees towards those enemies. Also getting shot by the battleship which is cruising alongside and apart from sub war 2050 this is the only fully 3D submarine game on the Amiga because all the other games are 2D games dressed up to look like 3D so this is the only 3D one and it runs fairly fast although I am using an all 30 of course to get some frame rate out of the game so that's practice now with the deck gun so we can check out surfaced and also submerged missions with the surfaced missions that also includes the torpedo run and so it's time to get out 
and practice aiming at those targets. This kind of game reminds me of Periscope and all the early arcade games where you simply have to shoot ports on the horizon and you have to time those and we get an explosion when they blow up and it takes some time to aim and then also wait for the torpedo to reach its target. quite difficult because you have to watch for the speed and also how near it is towards us and if it's a long way away and if it's moving quite quickly it's quite difficult to hit the target but you can see this arcade mode means that we can fire towards that convoy and during the missions this will definitely be important but not only can we do this we'll have to leg it as well and that's where the full combat mode of this game comes in so for now we can shoot down these easy targets and we're not under fire at this point from airplanes or other submarines so this is just a practice mode launching those torpedoes Managed to hit 42% so far, so let's see if any of the last ones actually hit this target on the horizon and it's moving further and further away and guess what, not a single one of them will hit that target. Once again, let's put a symbol of our initials in there and then we move on to the final surface training mission that we find in the Baltic and that is the minefield. So for this one we have to manoeuvre our submarine like a little dinghy backwards and forwards until we find a clear space between the mines. It doesn't really matter about our heading but if any of the mines of course touch our ship forward or aft they will blow up and it's very difficult at the best of times because there is a very tight turning circle as you can imagine with a submarine. Out of all of the games that have ever existed, this one reminds me more like Desert Fox on the Commodore 64, where we also get to shoot down planes, we also get a minefield, and we also get other things like a, a mini epics adventure only taking place in the Second World War. And I really do love the mini game scenarios in the Second World War, there are tons and tons of them probably none of which we'll ever get to cover on this playthrough series but things like D-Day and The Finest Hour and things like that sometimes have different sub games all piled in and some of them are quite fun. The surface minefield isn't very fun and I definitely wouldn't recommend going through that so let's check out another one, let's check out the underwater minefield because the underwater minefield at least we get to see and manoeuvre in 360 degrees. Underwater we can also rise and fall as well, we can dive and ascend through that water and so let's dive and I think the keys are the comma and the full stop keys to rotate the screen around even though that isn't in the manual and that's not online anywhere I pressed all the keys on the keyboard and you would think that that's the cursor keys but unfortunately not but we can rotate that screen around and it's very fun to do that 
And so if you find any mines, definitely the underwater minefield is the most fun because we can navigate that in full 3D. Moving on from the training missions, we have the proper missions and you can see a difficulty type as well and we also get to choose our submarine and I've no idea what difference it makes, let's just go for the new one and historical accuracy, survivability, I'm not quite sure, let's change the torpedo performance, let's change the slow boat repairs, let's have fast boat repairs on this one and equipment well let's have after 1941 and now we can begin and it gives us a basic layout of some of the missions in this game unfortunately there is no career mode so we can check out maybe Gibraltar and just like the movie Das Boat we get to try to get through Gibraltar it says it's very foggy and we'll have to sneak our way through Gibraltar in the fog and as soon as the fog clears we'll have to dive down and try to avoid that enemy. This game is apparently largely based on Das Boat, which was originally a TV series which came out in 1981, directed by Wolfgang Peterson, and I definitely recommend watching the subbed version, not the dubbed version, the subbed version of the original TV series, and don't bother going for the subbed remakes or anything like that, definitely the original TV series is the best one. So we've just bailed out of that mission, sneaking through Gibraltar and it's pretty difficult because the water isn't that deep. And so the Bay of Biscay is a bit higher up near France and in the Bay of Biscay we have to seek and destroy a rogue enemy ship that's been taken over. That's one of our ships that the enemy has taken over and we'll have to sink the ship. So that's like a hunter killer mission and also well in the North Atlantic we'll also find huge great distances you can see towards the Arctic Circle lots of things on the horizon I think we can also find icebergs as well and this is another hunter killer scenario where we have to track down convoys and enemy subs and things like that it's basically a real-time game where whatever we encounter becomes the next objective so let's abandon that we see lots of open water in most of these scenarios and yet again north atlantic that's also an open water scenario and we search for the aircraft carrier arc royal so i have to take down a massive aircraft carrier which is somewhere around here we'll have to find it we'll have to find clues wherever it is we'll have to stalk out places and sneak up on it and then blow it up so that's again one of the hard missions so for the rest of this playthrough let's just play the first one it's the fjord mission and that's on the shoulders of norway and now we get full control of the game where we get to select our objective the objective is to blow up the base at the end of the fjord so we can even blow up the map so it increases that so we can zoom in and it's our objective to get around the first islands and make our way through to the base at the end of the fjords and it would be absolutely immaculate if this game had a career mode but it doesn't so here we are we are now surfaced and we're now diving so we're now underwater so we get to have full control over our ship and there are quick keys available as well in order to maneuver our ship but most of it is of course controlled by the mouse and we can see we have now surfaced so surfacing we can now operate that deck gun and so you can see we're just experimenting with the various parts of the aircraft there's the anti-aircraft gun that we've seen already and the binoculars from the deck turret and we can view the control room from here as well and we can choose between diesel or battery power if you want silent running and check out the periscope from here as well if you want to dive under the water and get a bearing on our enemies 
So that's all in the control room. And we also have the binoculars as well. And the map, of course, we've seen already. We can even set waypoints on the map. So we are the white dots stuck out in the middle of the water. So what shall we do? We can go north or we can go south, but it doesn't really matter because of the big fat minefield parked in the middle of the fjords. So it doesn't matter which way we go. And so let's go south. Waypoint set full ahead, Captain. So now our ship will move in real time. This is an arcadey game. There isn't much simulation going on. It will now move in real time towards that target. We can now check out the external view and check out exactly what it's doing as it's moving towards that target and that's reminiscent of the Sherman tank game where you get to control Sherman tanks I think it's called M4 Sherman and you can check out them and remotely control them so that's the control room we can send out reports and things like that and get reports from the control room we can check out our fuel or our battery cells and also our air supply level which isn't too much of a problem as long as we are surfaced and check out a full report of what's going on so that gives you some kind of technical element in the game and the radio room of course we can broadcast various things to our home base and get mission orders as well so check out our first mission this is the radio room we're supposed to well let's receive our mission orders we'll have to decode them so which decoding thing should be used I'm not quite sure but I think only one of these is going to work so it says patrol the fjords and report any shipping activity so with this game, again, there are no missions, you basically make it up as you go along and it's a bit like an open world San Andreas game. Whatever you bump into then becomes the next thing. So really, we really need to send a message to U-Boat Command and I'm actually sending it to the wrong people at the moment and I'm sending that unencoded as well. So sending unencoded messages to the wrong people is going to get us a reprimand by somebody somewhere along the line so unfortunately for us we really have no idea what we're doing but look at that one of the enemy scouts has already found us and if we're not careful that's going to drop something onto our boat maybe even a rocket or a torpedo so let's get out that deck cannon and let's start gunning it down You can also see a boat on the horizon and this is a real time game this isn't turn based so we'll have to decide whether we want to take on that boat or gun it down or torpedo it or even dive under it and avoid the whole thing and let's move back to the conning tower so that we can manually move the boat and we can see the enemy is moving south so as long as we move north Let's get out the binoculars and check it out. That's moving south and it hasn't seen us. And it's a slow boat anyway, so that's not too bad. So let's get out the binoculars in this real time game. And this bit reminds me a bit of Hunter where we get real time things happening and things popping up. So what do we have there? We can see the bridge. It's a long way into the distance, but we're sneaking around on our way through to the mouth of the field. It's actually fun to flip between all these different things and pop there we go straight into the minefield so all will stop captain and I definitely think there are quick keys to stop the boat and we've managed to land in a minefield luckily we've switched on the quick repairs so as long as we stay out of trouble the repairs will now repair any damage that we've suffered so let's make our way slowly now under the water in real time and let's now try to get around or get under this minefield.
Das Boot, otherwise known as The Boat in English, and definitely not Das Boot, which is definitely not the way to say it, was coded by Steve Tibbet. He began by converting the 3D game Heatwave onto the Amiga as an NTSC game released to Accolade in 1990. That's a 3D powerboat simulator who get to powerboat all the way around Miami at high speed. So yet again, that's another Grand Theft Auto kind of a game. And definitely play that on NTSC if you're playing that. And he also coded Mega Fortress, which was released again by Mindscape, and that was another NTSC compatible game in 1992. Mega Fortress, I think you get to fly one of these massive bombers, and that has cannons and turrets and mini games based on defending that bomber. So. Steve Tibbet has a 3D legacy on the Amiga and there weren't too many 3D games out there. I'm reminded of the shuttle, the space flight sim, which was a real-time shuttle game and that was in full 3D and as far as sub simulators go, there really is only Subwar 2050 which created a fully real-time 3D game and that's pretty difficult but it's not impossible. So batteries are 100% sir because we're on the surface and we're using the diesels at the moment and um, we don't have to dive under the water if we get attacked by enemies in the Atlantic like another submarine and definitely those search and destroy and sneak em up missions are there for the people that want to take their time and really scope out the enemy in real time but this one is the most arcadiest of all of the missions in the game and it's the most fun, so that's the one I'm doing at the moment. It's the only one that I'm going to play through in this playthrough, so definitely if you want a fuller player guide you'll have to play it yourself. And you can see on top of this bridge there is actually mounted cannons firing down towards us, and we can take those out with the deck cannon, because the deck cannon is very powerful, it can fire up just as that thing can fire down as well. So now we're trying to take those out, but now we've attracted attention of the enemy. That means we're going to have to get onto the anti-aircraft guns again, and we're going to have to hopefully leave this thing to pilot itself under the bridge. succeeded in moving under that bridge and I'm not sure if we have a limited number of ammunition involved but these deck guns will jam up just as you would expect them to and once they jam up they will have to be repaired and that means that we'll have to either get out the cannon or dive under the surface not having any luck whatsoever and finally that's one of them down and two of them down so now finally we can switch over and look at that we're about to crash into the fjords so all stop captain all stop full reverse captain let's not go into that and yes you can damage yourself by colliding with the rocks so the water isn't very deep at the moment so we have to reverse a bit and try to turn this around and the more we go into enemy territory look at that incoming planes we'll find more enemies trying to attack us and in this game you have to control everything yourself, it's a one-man army so if you want the boat to move you'll have to do it yourself and if you want to shoot down the enemies you'll have to do it all yourself Unfortunately we've just hit shallow water and of course we can dive but it's only a shallow dive and that gives us some damage as well I don't really want to look in the control room to get a damage report because that's probably going to be at 50% and there's nothing we can do to repair ourselves that will simply automatically repair, I think. So going underwater at depth, we're going to have to look at that and make sure it doesn't go down too deep and then we can crawl forwards and dive as well down to maybe 40 meters or so and you can see that we are diving down under the water we're still in first person view at the moment and it's great that we can change the view as well 
and we can even check out the overview as well that's what's happening above us and you can see the planes drop into our pedals and bombing us but we're under the water the planes are tracking us under the water at the moment and that's not too bad they're scouting around the area and dropping things down on us but as long as they don't find the target we can hang around under the water and we can carry on with the mission so hopefully now we've got under the first bridge it's pretty disorientating and there we go and you can see that there are two planes buzzing around us so now hopefully we can set a waypoint so that we can maneuver our way down the fjord towards the next bridge something like this reminds me kind of a dam busters game where we get to attack something and it's our mission to get through a narrow corridor in this game we're not bouncing bombs off the surface of the water we're simply going through it and we can't dive forever because the fjord isn't that deep plus we can't dive forever anyway because well we'll get damaged on the bottom so you can see air bubbles as we're climbing back through again and sometimes that helps if we're trying to navigate through something that is very tight and you only have to do that on this very first mission thanks for sending unencoded reports to the enemy you idiot so that was the result of our sending and receiving encoded messages so that's fun to see and you can see that we can send and receive and do all those things so I'm not really going to bother doing that on this playthrough we're just going to go for the arcade sequences and now the next mission is to get under that bridge and that's not particularly easy because if we do that underwater that's again very difficult so it helps if we surface and if we surface of course we risk getting damaged by those aeroplanes or those seaplanes whatever they were and it looks like we have no option at the moment we're only 12 feet deep and the bridge is right there and so it looks like our only option is to surface again and try it again with that deck gun and hopefully it's been repaired by now but of course you can't repair a deck gun underwater you can only repair that on the surface so as soon as we surface we can get repairing but unfortunately look at that anti-aircraft gun has been damaged so every time we click on that it's going to come up that it's been damaged and that won't go away until we click on something else so trying to keep the enemies at bay you can see guns blowing us up on the bridge and also by the side of the river as well or whatever it is and you can see that we're heading straight for a beam in the middle of the bridge and if we're not careful we're going to damage the submarine so let's all stop again captain full reverse captain and let's try to full reverse and angle that thing unfortunately with this game unless you get under the bridge 100 percent you're going to collide with it and that will spin you around to face the opposite direction to make that approach all over again Unfortunately, turning this thing on the surface isn't as quick as turning it underwater and the turning circle on the surface is very much bigger if you're trying to move quickly like this and guess what clang we clang straight into the bridge again which means we're getting all this damage on the surface and that's definitely something to watch out for are the deck guns working yes they are let's see if we can knock these guys out and if we stop on the surface at any point of course we're a sitting target and we're more or less a sitting target at the moment drifting towards that bridge gives us a heading in the very top corner but unless you know your compass directions you could be facing the wrong way and at the moment I'm not actually sure whether we're supposed to be facing 
the bridge you're going the opposite way you can see that we're getting damaged as well because there's still things damaging us and so let's slowly make our way around it looks like the four gun has been blown up on the bridge which is fantastic but we're still moving forward so if not careful we're going to clang on that bridge again which i think is a high possibility because we're trying to move too quickly in the game and yes so sometimes this game is annoying but of course that only applies to this very first scenario because in the middle of the ocean during most of the other scenarios you won't get to do that and you won't get any bridges when you're trying to get through the Straits of Gibraltar either. So let's get underneath and let's do that properly this time and let's hopefully make our way trying to do that underwater. It's pretty difficult because we can change our camera angle and we can also change our bearing as well independently so sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't and let's try to navigate through and trying to do this in a narrow fjord is pretty impossible as you can imagine let's see if we make it and we can check it out well i'm not quite sure and no an underwater minefield so just like the previous attempt blowing up now on a minefield I do like the arcade aspects and the getting yourself out of trouble aspects of this game and if there was proper missions instead of throwing you into the middle of nothingness and expecting you to cope then this would be perhaps one of the better games on the Amiga, definitely submarine games, there aren't too many of them, people recommend Silent Service and other games like that. Red Storm Rising, but again, all those are 2D games. They have better atmosphere and are more playable, apparently, but they don't actually move in real time 3D. So, this was a valiant attempt, and this is hopefully a valiant attempt by me, still hiding under the bridge, trying to get through it. And we only have a certain amount of time to go now before we get blown up. So before that happens, as we try to make our way there, we can move through those scores. Amiga Joker gives this the lowest score with 63%. The next low score is Lemon Amiga, who gives this 64%, complaining that it definitely needed more substance rather than just a few mini games and throwing you into the middle of the ocean and for that most players didn't rate it very highly two out of the three comments said it definitely needed a career mode and so generation 4 gave this 72 percent amiga action gave it 74 amiga power gave it 75 ace gave it 76 acor gave it 79 co amiga gave this game das boot 84 percent and the highest score which I could find went to The One who avoided this game 91% saying that this has bags of action, it's a great real time simulator and everything's accounted for, damage modelling and communications and torpedoes and depth charges and all the rest of it. So those that got forward with it gave it a great score and those that didn't, didn't which means this game gets the average score of 7.5 out of 10. We're now heading along the surface and wouldn't you credit it, the Germans have mined the fjord, which means again trying to do it on the surface is impossible because we can't turn and because the submarine is so large it's quite difficult. So that means we're going to have to sneak through and inch through. There is no time limit in this game, but there isn't too much action involved. And even though this game definitely contains some action elements, it's not quite as action packed as you would imagine. And definitely if this game was more action packed, then it would be massive fun. 
and probably if you're trying to get through the Straits of Gibraltar, the surface fleet and it's trying to gun you away and you have to sneak through and if you're trying to surface you'll get surface aircraft bombing us and you get radio messages coming in and out and things like that so maybe there is tons of atmosphere but the arcade lovers said that it wasn't arcade enough and the strategy lovers saying it definitely wasn't deep enough and definitely didn't contain any strategy for the long term so while I rammed the last few mines and we're certainly not going to get to the objective in this playthrough I'll say I do have respect for this game for what it tried to do and just a bit more thought involved would have definitely meant that this game could have been brilliant unfortunately I don't think it was an official license you can't hear any official music or anything like that so it was kind of maybe a rip-off of the formula but they did try and I would give them top marks for trying and I would say that if this thing had a mission mode then definitely 7.5 out of 10 would be massively massively due and again if you've ever played Desert Fox on the Commodore 64 we had to get from A to B and avoid everything using minigames and this first scenario is really the only one that requires us to do that apart from again trying to get through the Straits of Gibraltar because the rest you just have to take down a vessel, take down an aircraft carrier, take down a sub or simply a fleet and survive. So thank you for watching this play guide and review and I'll see you again on another one sometime soon. Thank you.